Welcome back to another episode of This Week on Channel 9. I'm your host, Christina Warren, Senior Cloud Advocate. And first off, apologies for uh, the delay since the last episode. So first I was traveling, and then we had some um, studio delays. But spoiler, unfortunately, this is going to be the last episode for a few weeks, as I will discuss in just a bit. But in the meantime, let's enjoy this extra-packed episode with tons of the latest developer news. First up, just a comment on the ongoing COVID-19 situation. So as you're probably aware, a strain of a coronavirus known as COVID-19 is having massive impact on the world. And for everyone watching this, no matter where you're based, please, please, please take care of yourselves and your family members and follow the directions of your local governments or health organizations. And also like wash your hands, like wash your hands. Cold and flu season is bad enough, but this latest wrinkle is understandably concerning many people. And so here in Seattle, um, all Microsoft employees have actually been asked to work from home um, and our studio will be closed for a few weeks. Now, I will miss you all, but uh, please follow us on Twitter for uh, your latest dev news and we hope we'll see you soon. But you know, the great thing about technology is that we can now do more online and remote. And on that note, Microsoft Teams is now available for free to all users, including small businesses, enterprises, governments, and schools. And I've got a link in the show notes and the description for how you can get more info on that and hopefully have an easier time collaborating. I've also got a link to a great blog post from Scott Hanselman, everybody's favorite developer, and uh, he's also a remote work god, and he's got a great post on how to get the most out of remote work. And on that note, because of COVID-19, there are a number of tech conferences that have been canceled or are moving online only. And so we've already had to cancel a few stops of Microsoft Ignite, the tour, for the safety of all of our attendees. And we'll update you on any more other changes as we find out more. But additionally, GitHub has announced that GitHub Satellite will now only be an online event, which will take place in early May. And we're also going to be moving some of our planned in-person events online, including WSL Conf, which is a community event sponsored by Microsoft and Canonical that will now be taking place fully online next week. And so I'm super psyched to be able to tune in for all the WSL nerdery and whether you're new to the world of the Windows subsystem for Linux, aka WSL, um, and the upcoming WSL 2, or you're already uh, a believer, please be sure to tune in. And so I've got details in the show notes down below. And while we're talking about WSL, I just want to share a few quick tidbits. So first up, Docker support for Windows 10 Home is now here in the Edge version of Docker Desktop. And so you'll need to be running WSL 2 uh, Windows Insider builds, but this is a great move for anyone who has wanted to play with Docker containers, but doesn't have a Windows 10 Pro or Enterprise license. So I've got a link to Docker's blog post in the show notes down below. And I also wanted to give a shout out to WSL Conf organizer and Canonical's developer advocate for WSL, Hayden Barnes on a, a fantastic blog post that he wrote a couple of weeks ago about how you can dual boot Windows 10 Insider without partitioning your Windows machine. So basically, you can use Hyper-V to boot from a VHDX image on bare metal, which I didn't even know was possible, but knowing it has seriously changed how I set up my dev boxes. It's awesome. And so I've got a link to his blog post down below, and I also wanted to give a plug to the Raft WSL utility that he helped build that makes it super easy to manage your WSL um, distributions in a native C Sharp uh, slash XAML app for Windows 10. And it's, it's basically like Kitematic for WSL, if you're familiar with Kitematic. And that's how Hayden describes it, and you can check that out with the link to the Microsoft Store down below. Next up, in some PowerShell news, PowerShell 7 is now generally available. And so for those unfamiliar, PowerShell 7 is the latest major update to PowerShell, which is our cross-platform uh, automation tool and configuration framework that's optimized for dealing with structured data like JSON or CSV or XML. There are uh, REST APIs and object models. And PowerShell includes a command line shell, there's an object-oriented scripting language, and there are a set of tools for executing scripts, um, also known as command lists and managing modules. And PowerShell is the successor to what we were calling PowerShell Core 6. And you can think of it as like the new modern version of PowerShell that also works everywhere you want to work on Windows, on Linux, on Mac, and on other platforms too. And so we've got more details um, on the release, including how you can migrate some of your older scripts if you need to do that, um, and some of the various platforms, some of the various ARM platforms that PowerShell 7 supports in um, a blog post in the show notes and the description. And huge congrats to that team. And in the same vein as PowerShell 7, the PowerShell VS Code extension has received an update, including an ISE compatibility module. There's a syntax highlighting, multi 
multi-line editing and back search and integrated console, and there are also performance updates. And so I've got a link to the full blog post on the VS Code extension and a link to download it uh, down below in the show notes and the description. Speaking of Visual Studio, the Spring 2020 roadmap for Visual Studio is now online with a peek into the work that's planned for Visual Studio through June 2020. And so you can check that out in the show notes and the description. And we hope that you will share your feedback with the team through the developer community portal. And I've got a link for that down below too. And in some Visual Studio online news, since the public preview of Visual Studio Online went live in November, the team has been hard at work making changes and improvements based on your feedback. And so uh, there have uh, been some new changes that have rolled out, and some of those new features include support for Docker images and Docker files when you're creating your environments. So that's really great. You can customize a lot more. And there's also support for even more projects and default environment setups out of the box. There's a turbo mode and the ability to turn on the latest features in the browser. And so I've got a link uh, to a blog post with all the details in the show notes and the description down below. And if you haven't tried out Visual Studio Online, now's the time to do it. It's great. Next up, Power Toys, our new open source utility tools, or toys, for Windows is now at version 0.15.1. And this release fixes more than 100 issues, makes you aware of when a new version of Power Toys is available. It removes the always run as admin requirement. There are some improved uh, Fancy Zones compatibility with lots of different applications and more. And a huge shout out to Clint and the rest of the Power Toys team. I love what they're doing and building. On Channel 9 this week, there's tons of great content. So first up, on Visual Studio Toolbox, you can learn more about the Uno platform and how it works behind the scenes. It's really great. And over on the IoT show, Olivier talks about running Azure IoT Edge on Yocto Linux, which is awesome. And on Careers Behind the Code, Stephen Tobe, who is a partner architect on .NET, talks about exploring different disciplines in your career. So check out all those videos in the show notes down below. And now it's time for my pick of the week. So technically this happened like a couple of weeks ago, but it was so cool that I had to save it and share it with you all. So Xbox Pope, who is the famed community member who makes the most amazing mockups and renders of Xbox and Xbox related designs that I wish were real, made a mockup of an Xbox Series X in rose gold just for me. And as I said on Twitter, Phil Spencer, if you make this happen, I will literally change careers and become the greatest Xbox Series X advocate the world has ever seen. Like, I swear, I'm gonna do it. Like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna quit my job and just go work for you. So please make this. Let me know your dream Xbox Series X color or design in the comments down below, or comment on any of our other stories. And if you like this video, go ahead and give us a like on YouTube, and go ahead and subscribe to our channel, Microsoft Developer. It really helps us out. So I'm not sure when I'll be back. I would love to try to do this remote if possible, but in any event, stay safe, wash your hands, and see you next time.